Hey guys, Captain Connor Bryant, Tidal Waters Guide Service. We're here with a Maverick HBXS. Uh, this boat is owned by Captain Cleve Hancock with Brown Dog Sportfish. Uh, Cleve, you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Like Connor said, I'm Captain Cleve here in Charleston, South Carolina. This here is my office. It is a Maverick HPXS. This boat is 17 feet, eight inches, and in my opinion, with the boats that I've run, it is a perfect fit for our low country marsh here. This boat will get shallow enough where I have no problem regularly finding fish with their backs out of the water. And uh, if you want to step closer, I'll show you some features to it. Some cool parts about this boat is that it is incredibly dry. Looking from the front and back, you'll see it has a big overhang from this deck down to the hull. All that keeps us pretty dry as we regularly are having to cross open waterways in search of our flats here in the low country. Another cool specific feature to this boat is if you look low on it, a lot of boats will have chines or polling streaks nice and low. This boat has a good flat surface, which allows me to easily skate over oyster bars and mud. Let's hop on up and talk a little bit about the layout of the deck on this boat and what makes it super fishable. Right off the front here, we have a good size hatch. You can open this right up. It's great storage, keeps everything super dry with these big gutters here. No problem with water coming in. And the beautiful part is when you do go to wash it out, all of this drains right back open to the bilge. You don't have any issues with water pooling or staying stagnant or old tubes that get clogged up drain-wise that you do in other boats. And that's a biggie too, especially when you start the, the weekend, weekend fishermen that fish it, especially in hotter elements where that water is just going to sit in a closed compartment and just create that funky smell and start mildewing everything. Abs, mildew is certainly an enemy when you own a boat. It is. Sliding back here, you've got some pretty good wide walkable gunnels. Another nice part of this boat is despite the lower freeboard or the rise off the water of the hull, it's very shallow, but you've got a good step up from the deck onto your platform up front, this front deck. So it makes you feel very securing, like you're riding in the boat as you move around, as opposed to riding on top of it, like you do in other skiffs. You come back, just a very simple console here. I'm a big fan of simplicity in my boats. You know, when you're on the water as much as me, every extra feature is one more thing to maintain or break or give you a headache. So, you know, really, I've got trim tabs, and uh, that's about it as far as running. Got some electronics I'll occasionally turn on depending on what fish we're chasing that day. Uh, but for most of my shallow water stuff, I find that very unnecessary even with that. Couple uh, rod holders here for when we do have spinning rods on the boat. I do primarily fly fish, but I'm not afraid of throwing some artificials when the conditions dictate it as well. A short console as well with this. So no, no uh, glassed in front seat here, just an easy cooler to remove. Say I'm fishing by myself on a rare day or I want to open up some deck space, don't have a third person on the boat. It's a great way to open up the floor a good bit. Now, do you know if they make these consoles with the front jump seat or are they all just They consoles? do, if you do want, so Maverick Boat Company will not make a one piece console, but they do have some molded coolers that fit seamlessly up against that. And those will be removable as well. Um, I found an easy option to be just a smaller cooler like this. It's very convenient too, being able to open up that entire cockpit. Absolutely. Looking into the boat, you'll see you've got good padded gunnels. You'll have three rod tubes going forward and two going back. These back facing rod tubes are often overlooked, but they're a great feature to have as say you're an angler coming off the front of the boat. You can easily go ahead slide that rod right in facing this way without having to come walk into the boat, make a U-turn, and then slide your rod in. So having them facing both ways can give you a lot of options for rod storage, as well as carrying more rods should you need to. So looking at the back of the console, all Mavericks are gonna have the same back door here. You have a flip down there, I have a spool for my tippet here for when we fly fish. Nice, easy addition to grab it when I need it. But this console door will slide out as well, giving you access to batteries, rigging, anything you need in there. 
being able to access your wire, especially when you're talking about putting putting boats and putting like wiring in these in these saltwater environments, that's a that's a really big thing to do. Uh, especially the smaller boats. I don't know. Uh, some of them, it seems like it's some of they make it to where it's impossible to work on. And being able to open up a compartment like this, and you can crawl right into it, get what you need to do, and get out quickly. That's that's an awesome feature for Mavericks. Absolutely. One. Uh... One inconvenient reality of being on the water as much as we are, you know, things will break. It's, it's not if, but when, and being able to easily and with great access be able to replace those things is, it, it speaks volumes, you know? Absolutely. It can be the difference from, from a 15 minute piece of work to a couple hours. Absolutely. So great to have that. So let's slide back and talk a little bit about the back deck here. So most Maverick cushions, when they come from the factory, they're gonna be the same size and they're gonna fold forward. I have upgraded this one with New Moon upholstery. It's good, firm cushion, and I have bolted it to my deck so it doesn't move. Trailer with it, stand on it, uh, bounce on it like a trampoline. It is there um, and it don't have to worry about it sliding around. This boat does have an optional backrest that will attach to these mounts. I have removed mine, again, with the mentality of simplicity. One less thing to step over when I make 100 trips to this polling platform every day. Uh, one less thing to jump over. But let's talk about the layout on these hatches back here. On the uh, rear port hatch, it's be similar to the rear starboard. It's good access to it. It's good and deep. You can see inside it runs much wider than even the opening. So plenty of room to stow boxes, gear, tackle anything you need in there. This one on this side primarily houses water bottles and uh, fly boxes and terminal tackle, anything in there that I need. In the middle, we have a good size bait well. Right now being winter, it doubles as my winter clothes storage. But you can see it's got good access in there, good drain. We have, uh, you can remove that plug, fill it up. It has both a bubbler and a recirculating pump. For those days, we do have live bait on the boat. In the back hatch, we have our bilge access. We have our bilge access in the back pump. This just comes up. You can see pretty good access to all of our pumps, oil fuel filters, primer bulbs, good easy connections on all of our electric wiring should we need to change anything out. Let's close that on up. Again, in the name of simplicity, you're gonna see a lot of these boats run with jack plates. I have found it's easy to save the weight and one more mechanical thing on my boat just to run without a jack plate. While we absolutely have shallow water here in South Carolina, I don't find myself running over miles of expanses over it, so I can easily you know, get over anything I need to with this setup here. I do have a Yamaha F70 on it, which has been a great, reliable motor. As someone that does most of their maintenance themselves, all aspects of it have been very easy to maintain. You don't hear many bad things about these F70s. No, they've been fantastic. And on this boat, you're gonna see, you know, upper 30s, low 40s with that 70 on it, which for a boat of this class is, is great numbers. And what are you seeing with fuel burn on this boat with, with your cruising speed? Fuel burn, I, you know, I can see anywhere, depending where the throttle's at, how it's loaded. You know, these boats being as light as they are, you know, an extra person, extra full cooler can certainly, you know, by percentages of it, be a big change, but I can see anywhere, you know, as high as, you know, eight, seven, eight miles a gallon, sometimes bumping nine uh, at a good cruise. So awesome. super, super economical. This boat, if I'm thinking correctly, is a 19 gallon tank. Okay. So ample fuel burn for multiple days of fishing or, you know, when we got out and do some tarpon fishing, gives us plenty of room to run and find those fish. Absolutely. And I will say one thing that I've noticed on these Mavericks compared to the Hell's Bay that we did in a previous video is your hatch lids offer on these Mavericks a little more walk around area. Uh, so if you have this hatch open, you have the ability to still walk behind your compartment lid um, without having to walk on just like a small area um, of non-skid like you do with the Hell's Bays. Uh, in the previous video with the God and the Whip Ray we did, you'll notice that they have very large, long uh, hatches on them. So it's depending on your preference with uh, 
with the room that you'd like. Some people, they want these smaller ones where they have a lot more non-skid. It's not something they're gonna worry about slipping off the boat on. Some like the larger compartments where they can reach in there, crawl down, get what they need to get. Um, that's, that's definitely a uh, personal preference thing in my opinion. Um, so what exactly is this? So this right here in the, uh, the days before power poles and all that, this is a stakeout rope. So what we would use this for is uh, when we're pulling the boat up here, you've got your push pole in hand. And let's say you want to stop somewhere for a little bit. You found a school of fish. You want to kind of pin down and be stationary on. You can drive your push pole into some soft bottom and with a quick hitch knot, tie off right on this rope. So even in the days where I do have a power pole on this boat that tucks up wonderfully right under the platform, I find myself out of habit, oftentimes when I'm polling, just to drive that pole in and still stake out with the rope. Another benefit of having this here is on the times where I really do want to pin down on a specific spot and hold the bow at a correct angle instead of just down current, I can put this down, then using my push pull, stake out and tie off on it, and that way the boat won't swing and hold directly at another point. A so great, very simple, convenient features. Absolutely, it's, you know, it's the best two, three dollars you'll spend for boat positioning while you're up there. Um, another cool feature on this hull is recessed trim tabs. So by recessed, what we're talking about is they are into the hull here as opposed to mounted direct on the back and sticking out. While this doesn't seem like too big of a deal, we fish a lot of really tight creeks here in South Carolina in the low country. And what this does, it gives me just a little bit tighter turning radius. And in practical terms, that can be the difference between making a U-turn to pull out of a creek or pulling backwards for a couple hundred yards. So the little things can make a difference. All right, Cleve, so I noticed your drain right here at your aft bulkhead. Now, does this drain, does it have, does it have its own drainage into a scupper or where is this draining into? So one of the cool things about this boat when it comes to drainage, this will drain right into the bilge. So as water comes in here, it's gonna come right into your bilge and your bilge pump knocks it out. So less holes on the back of the boat, less additional things to come through. As far as drainage does go, the front compartment and the deck here will drain into the bilge of the boat. All these hatches will drain separately should water fall into these gate, fall into these uh, crevices, into the recessions here, they will come out from behind the trim tabs. But okay. most of this runs right into the boat, so there's less hoses to clog, back up, things like that, and the bilge pump knocks out any of the little water spray you may take right away, and it's not a problem. That's very convenient. All right, Cleve, so I noticed, uh, just like the guide we did earlier, you also run a, uh, a stool on your bow. Um, do, do you also run a casting platform as well? So I do, you know, I have almost always had a casting platform up front here. So I've kind of noticed through time and working with a lot of anglers, that sometimes it can be difficult if you're not used to coming forward, standing on that stool. Um, and a lot of people would just use a flat deck. So I found the easiest way is to add a stool. I actually borrowed one from a friend of mine this past tarpon season and just fell in love with it. So I had to add one for myself. It is a great you know, third point of contact up here to kind of brace yourself against. It's very stable. You can use it as a handhold as you come onto the deck. I also have plenty of space to have a spin, two spin anglers still up here at a time. Uh, both can lean against this as well. So it's been a real positive addition. You know, one disadvantage is you lose the elevation for visibility from a platform, but I think the positives you gain from it do outweigh uh, the drawback of the loss of elevation. All right, Cleve, so with your push pole, is this a carbon marine push pole? That's right, Connor. This is a carbon marine G3LR, which is kind of their top of the end, lightest and stiffest push pole. This one is 24 feet long. The reason I go for such a long push pole is, number one, it gives me the opportunity to cross a little deeper water. Let's say I'm pulling a shallow flat and I've got to cross a little deeper creek mouth, I can still get that pole down and cross that short stretch of deeper water. Another advantage is I can make one more push on that pole before I have to pick it up and replant it. Over the course of a day, that extra one or two you know, hand motions can can really add up. So just a little extra length can actually save you some effort in the long run. 
Another little advantage of this push pole that I've opted with, if you come all the way to the front, you'll notice a lot of people opt for push poles with a flat mud bar across it. We regularly pull here in very soft, soupy pluff mud, uh, marsh mud, things of that nature. I've actually found going to a straight fork like this with no bar across it will pull out of the mud easier when it gets stuck, when you go to replant that pole. So a little counterintuitive thing most people don't necessarily think of when they first think of push poles for the soft bottom. And that can save you, almost everyone I know that has fallen off of a polling platform has fallen off due to trying to get that mud foot out of the mud. And then when it breaks free, they lose their balance. So not having that bar straight across definitely offers a, a safety feature as well. To... You, you could look at it as that. Cleve, I've fished on your boat quite a few times now, and I will say one feature I love is this magnetic pad. Uh, totally different than a lot of the little stick it pads that you get from some of these other brands, these uh, Evo foam pads, but having the ability to just grab some anything magnetic, whether it's a fly, your nippers, and just grab it and go. Especially a lot of times you have fish in front of you, you don't have a lot of time to fiddle around and try to make sure something gets stuck in it. So. Sticking, sticking something on that magnetic pad, that is one feature on the way that you have your boat set up that I love. Absolutely, and another kind of advantage of it I've found is a lot of flies will have a mono weed guard, especially fishing in as much grass as we do here in uh, Charleston. So a lot of times when you stick that fly in that foam pad, that weed guard always gets all bent out of shape, whereas here I can just set that fly right against it and I don't have to worry about any of that bending out. Another nice little feature on here, I've got are these soft cup holders. These can just fit water bottles, cans of any size. They're uh, pretty readily available, just about any auto parts, bike shops. I think these came off for a bike frame, but they just attach right in here. They can slide in, slide out, stay out of the way. Uh, easy little addition there. That is one, cup holders are one thing on these boats that are really overlooked by manufacturers, uh, in my opinion, um, where a lot of these boats, they're so focused on fishing, they don't think about the water bottle aspect of it. So yeah, these little soft ones where you can just get them out of the way and still keep your water bottle from rolling around the deck and making a bunch of noise, it's a great idea. All right guys, thanks for tuning in for another, another episode of the skiff walkthroughs. Um, again, if you have any, any skiffs you wanna see us do a walkthrough on or any questions regarding this Maverick HBX-S, drop them in the comments below. Uh, I wanna say a huge thank you to Captain Cleve for letting us tear apart your boat and of course, any time. about your opinion on these boats they're they're beautiful boats and uh thanks for coming out oh thank you for having me